Hey ladies and gentlemen, or well met as Uther the Lightbringer would say. Uther is one of the heroes in Blizzard's newest hero brawler, Heroes of the Storm. And in the Nexus, Uther functions as a melee support hero. Today I would like to show to you my Uther one-stop guide. In it I'll be going through two different talent trees, which I believe form the two major archetypes of how you can play Uther. Now Uther has various different talents. He's got some really useful ones and some almost useless ones. And then he's got one that is even worse than not taking any talent at all. I'd like to show you which talents to pick for the different versions of playing Uther. And hopefully with my gameplay tricks and tips, you'll be able to up your game with Uther a little bit more. There he is, Uther the Lightbringer, the first paladin and founder of the Order of the Silver Hand. He's a faithful servant of the light, and he dispenses justice with the swing of his hammer. Uther is a bastion of truth and an unflinching symbol of the Alliance. Now, isn't that sweet? Uther is a melee support. Some people play him as a melee warrior. Other people style him as a melee assassin. And other people think that you should just get a lot of mana talents with him. But there are some different builds. The first build that I would like to show you is what I call Best Friend Uther. I'll show you the talents on a list after we go through why I think certain talents are better than others. So you don't have to write this down. I'll show the image just a little bit later and then you can take a screenshot of it. Let's take, first take a look at Uther's toolkit, shall we? He's got three basic abilities. Holy Light, very simple. One burst of healing on a nearby ally. It scales up pretty well and it's quite a big burst of healing. Then you've got Holy Radiance. This is your secondary healing talent. Holy Radiance is very useful because you can heal several people at the same time if your allies cooperate and stand more or less in a line. A little bit more about that later. You can also damage enemies in that same line. So there are two ways to use it. Or it can be a hybrid where you heal some allies and any enemies that are hit in the crossfire will take damage as well as well. That's kind of the ideal application of it, if that's how it happens to happen. Finally, one of the things that makes Uther to be such a great healer. If we're classing supports, I would say Uther's probably the second best, only behind Brightwing. Now, Brightwing has a lot of utility, um, but doesn't necessarily excel in everything uh, better than Uther. They're just different. She's slightly more popular at the pro level, but personally, Uther, he's one of my favorite heroes, which is why I decided to make this first hero guide all about Uther. Uh, he's very fun to play. Personally, right now, I like him more than Brightwing, and I think he has a really great kit. This third one here is Hammer of Justice. Stun and damage an enemy. Now, the key part there is stun. The damage is not a whole lot, and we'll get back to that a little bit later. His trait is Eternal Devotion. When killed, Uther's spirit remains temporarily on the battleground. Now, this is just for a few seconds, but it's enough time to cast two Hammers of Justice and one Holy Light and one Wave of Radiance, uh, the, the Holy Radiance. Maybe a second Holy Light. Two heroic abilities Uther has. He's got Divine Shield, which is uh, very uh, lore accurate to how Uther was, for example, played as a Paladin in Warcraft 3. And I never played World of Warcraft, so I can imagine he has some kind of Divine Shield there too. Target becomes invulnerable and moves faster for a short duration. This is the talent that you'll generally be playing when you're level 1 and talent gated, and unable to pick the second ultimate. I wouldn't say it's bad, and on other heroes maybe this could be a valid secondary uh, heroic ability choice. But his second heroic ability is really good, and in a sense... His second heroic ability reduces damage to all of your allies and adds damage to all of the enemies, which is better than just making one ally temporarily invincible. Heroes of the Storm is such a team game that even if you make one ally invincible, someone else may take the fire instead and die. That's why I like the second one the best, and most people seem to agree. Second one is called Divine Storm. For just 75 mana, and you can do it every 70 seconds, you deal area damage and stun enemies in a small, Repeat, small circle around yourself. It's a great uh, ability, but it often gets misused, which is kind of why I was inspired to make this video. 
in uh, when you play Hero League, which is available from profile level uh, 30, as you can see right now, I'm level 40. But from profile level 30 you, and having 10 heroes unlocked, let's say purchased, uh, you can play Hero League. And generally in Hero League, the correct way to play is to play with one or two healers. And we'll treat both situations here in these guides. Because I'm going to teach you uh, a supportive Uther build, which I call Best Friend Uther. And also a Damaging Uther build, which I call Damage Uther or Unholy Uther. Um, and so let's talk about when you're the only healer in your team. You generally like to go with the Best Friend Uther build. So let's take a look at his talents for level one. First, we'll just analyze it, and then this is the best friend Uther one, and then I'll show uh, a summary. And then we'll go into the playstyle of the second one, which is where you might be the second healer in your team. You can change a few talent choices and adjust your playstyle, because just mass healers in your team without some extra damage and utility may not uh, give your team the kind of oomph that it requires. Uh, for, le for level one with Uther, you have four different choices. I would say two of these are good and two of them are not so good. This one, Conjurer's Pursuit. When you pick up those regen globes, they drop from wizards on the enemy lane minions. Every lane wave has three, what I call footmen, three archers and a wizard. The wizard drops a regen globe, where it heals all of you and your allies in a big radius around you and you see this green wave uh, of the globe go to you which affects you and heals you up with a bit of health regen every three you pick up permanently increases your mana regen this is pretty nice because you can really spam your spells sometimes with uther uh, stunning people healing people you do your ultimate and you'll get many of those off in a kind of protracted fight so it is very useful and you've got reach for only your holy light the range will be increased by two. Now, there have been quite a few moments where I thought, just a little closer, if I was just a little closer, I could heal that ally. But, oh, wait, I don't have enough mana. So, strictly speaking, reach is the better one in a neutral team fight where you are all prepared, your team is prepared, the enemy is prepared, it's like, Let's all heal up at the fountain and then we go meet up and then we have a fight. Reach is going to be superior because you'll be able to heal people better even if you're slightly out of position. But oftentimes not everything goes exactly as planned. We walk around on the map, we want to keep our map presence, we want to remain active, we want to remain useful and we want to go from point A to B and not keep going home in between. For that Conjurer's Pursuit has a huge advantage because you don't have to hearthstone as often you'll show up more on time for that tribute that you're trying to capture instead of like oh sh i need to go back quickly to the to the heart uh, hearthstone back to the core and then uh, get out there it's like i'll be 10 seconds late don't start without me no i said don't start without me and they all started already where are you uther so i like conjurer's pursuit here let's talk about the other two talents here hammer of justice damage increased by 40 percent um, as it stands, Hammer of Justice barely does any more damage than a basic attack. Think, for instance, if you attack for 120 damage at some point, maybe your Hammer of Justice will do like 130, 140 damage, something like that. And it takes about as much time to process as one basic attack. To increase it by 40% is not badass. It's giving up great utility of healing or mana regen and just makes you a little bit more into uh, do a bit more burst damage but you can't do it as often because maybe you're out of mana you're not healing uh, allies as well it's not really what fits uther and even in the unholy uther builds which i will be discussing second i would never pick this talent i've tried it so it's not uh, fear of the unknown i just don't think it's good blessed champion mm, yeah your attack speed is not very high as Uther compared to, for instance, uh, melee assassins or some ranged damage users like Bala. And you're not going to get as many basic attacks in. You're not as tanky as the Stitches and you're not attacking very fast. Plus, you may need to get in range to heal allies. Basic attacks are great. They are a very important part of Uther's kit and to finish people off. And I'm not going to say you're never going to attack because you should if you're not doing something wrong. 
but I wouldn't say that it's going to be great that you're healing people for 25% of the damage. You hit someone for 150 or 160, you heal nearby allies for 40. It's not that great. Um, all right, let's go to the level four talent. You've got some talents here which are quite bad. Uh, basic attacks restore five mana. You don't need it anymore. You've already got Conjurer's Pursuit. Protective Shield is another burst heal. It scales up per level. It says 185 here, but that's it's always higher than that. Uh, this one is really good. Um, this is the favorite one here. This is the one I'm uh, making part of that build. Fist of Justice is kind of cool. More Hammers of Justice. Um, I have used this build a lot. It was kind of my favorite one when I first started out with Uther, but it's not it's not right. Again, focuses a lot on basic attacks. You will get more stuns off, but you will die somewhat quicker than you normally would if you would normally shield yourself. And that also means less hammers of justice. Also, you have a lot of allies. It's a team game. In team fights, if you can save an ally with shield instead of them, then maybe they die three seconds later. Whatever they're doing in those three seconds could be more valuable than your one extra hammer of justice. Really like the shield here, and we are dealing with a uh, very supportive Uther. You've got Protect the Weak. It's pretty bad. Not sure why it's there. Um, healing minions and mercs refunds its mana cost and cooldown. Not important. You're not going to get any mana problems after picking up enough regen gloves. Cooldown, I guess it's kind of cool, but then you, no pun intended, but then you already wasted your Holy Light on a minion, so it doesn't even refund all of it. You should be healing allies or just saving your mana or whatever. Um, it seems strange, like it's kind of like push Uther, but um, not nearly as good as the others. It, the, the times where you could effectively use it do not justify the loss of utility in fights. So we we'll go with the protective shield. Level seven has a lot of talents. This is the worst talent that you could ever take. It knocks the target back. Oftentimes this is gonna be uh, counterproductive. You wanna kill them? You go to them, you barely get in range, you stun them, maybe you follow up with your ultimate, maybe your allies follow up, and then suddenly they get knocked back into safety. Don't get it. See a lot of people with this talent. It might be because they're um, talent gated or that they think it's good. But again, you don't need this if you have Conjurer's Pursuit. This is the only mana talent you need. Uh, this one returns mana and reduces cooldown up to a maximum of five seconds. Now the Cooldown for Holy Radiance is 12 seconds. So you could bring it down to like seven or eight, but we're gonna discuss a talent at level 16 that also reduces cooldown to eight seconds. Mm, you could have a lot of waves of Radiance, I guess, but the mana, the mana refund part is useless. So you could say that half of the talent is already wasted. The cooldown reduction is kind of cool, I guess, but you, you're gonna be very obsessed with like hitting multiple allies to get more cooldown reduction. And very often you just need both talents to heal a single guy. Maybe it's just the two of you, you're in a lane, he's about to die. You're just gonna spam your Q and your W and heal him with both. And then you've got one second cooldown reduction. Not that useful. These three are pretty cool. All these three are good talents. We're gonna discuss now these two, Clairvoyance and Cleanse. Clairvoyance is I want to recommend it to beginning Uther players for two reasons. One, cleanse is really difficult to use. Uh, two, you can learn to be a better player when you play with clairvoyance. Reason is, say for instance, you're walking around on the map, right? And uh, you think, okay, I'm here and the enemy is probably right here, but he could be here. I'm going to make an educated guess that the enemy is here at the boss. And I want to know if it's true without looking at the replay. Now, the advantage of not looking at the replay <laughs> is your saving time, which brings up your GPH, your games per hour, which brings up your learning. So you think, okay, they could be here at the boss. Let's check it out with clairvoyance. Ah, I was right. Oh, ah, I was wrong. They're not there. Okay, you're learning map awareness. So these kind of vision talents um, will help you to get more aware of where the enemies are. Secondly, of course, it's great to actually know where they are because you can't always 100% accurately guess where they are. So you can find out 
where the opponents are with that talent. Secondly, it's really good when both teams are setting up, um, for example, on Cursed Hollow, and there's lots of little winding paths, bushes, there's ambush places, cast the clairvoyance, take away all doubt. Or maybe you have a stitches in your team and he wants to do a blind hook. Well, now it's not a blind hook anymore. Now you can use a CV and show him exactly where he can hook people that are trying to set a trap. Coordinate it well and act quickly and they may not even have time to move after you cast it. Finally, if the opponent's team is annoying and pesky Zeratuls and Novas, use this talent. You can reveal cloaked heroes and heroes of the storm by casting area of effect spells in their direction which then hit them when they take damage they'll be revealed but maybe you already missed your holy radiance and you still see that zero to poking near you cast a clairvoyance at your own feet hammer of justice in and smite his ass to unholy hell so someone can click them yeah when uh, you reveal them very useful to also save allies for instance, you are pretty much holding down the fort in your own lane at level 7, but you see that one of your allies is struggling with a zero tool poking in the north. Suddenly cast the clairvoyance and help them out. Very useful talent. Cleanse is a once in a 30 seconds ability, a talent that can remove all debuffs, roots, stuns, silence, and so forth from an ally and re prevent. Prevent their reapplication for one second. And that part is pretty cool. Save allies with that. But it's hard to use because you need to be very quick. I wouldn't recommend trying to learn this uh, skill, the correct usage of this skill in your first 100 games uh, of Heroes of the Storm. And if you're somewhat newer to the genre, don't even do it for the first 500. Or maybe you are such a devout Uther player and you really want to get the hang of it. Sure, go ahead, practice with it. But you'll need to learn to recognize all the different debuffs that can happen on your allies. Practice makes perfect, and Cleanse is a great one to save your allies from frosty, chilly, stunning effects. Pick one of these two. For level 10, Divine Storm. Right, Divine Storm is a great talent that can stun multiple enemies. Now, here's how to use Divine Storm. You look at the situation in the team fight, all right? and you see some people are starting to get damaged they, they, they initially start the fight telling each other or telling themselves let's not clump up Uther could sprint in and stun all of us right but that kind of caution starts to evaporate as they start getting preoccupied with various different talents and skills and spells that your allies are slinging at the enemy at some point they may even converge and attack your allied thrall Right, throw a melee assassin does a lot of damage but he's kind of squishy they converge and attack him you've been healing people you've been analyzing the correct angle with which to cast your holy radiance to heal multiple of your own allies and hit some of the enemies as well and damage them you've been stunning people taking out big threats or delaying the damage that big threats are doing on your allies for example you stun that kerrigan as a high dps and good skills to disable your allies Right, suddenly you see they're converging on your thrall or on your kerrigan now you run in and you stun all of them and it allows your thrall to hit them with one spell all of them or or your kerrigan to grasp all of them there's some kind of fallout now here's how not to use it i'm uther i'm uther the warrior i'm literally conan the barbarian i know my allies can read my mind i know that when I jump in, I sprint in, and I'm gonna cast the perfect ultimate. I hit all five of them, there's gonna be a follow up. Guys, I hit all five of the allies. Why are you on the other side of the map? Why aren't you following up on my perfect divine storm? Must I do everything myself? Why are you guys so incompetent to compare to me? That's not how to use the ability. And sadly, I still see a lot of the application like this. Sprint which we'll get to at level 13, is a talent that should be used with extreme prejudice and extreme caution. Use it at the right time. You don't always have to use it when you move in. You can use it when you move out or reposition yourself. Save yourself for a while so that you can continue to heal your allies. Don't like the Uthers that just run in and die early uh, because you can't heal your allies anymore. It doesn't matter how bloody perfect your ultimate uh, or your heroic ability was. Again, Divine Shield, it's pretty cool, I guess, but not worth it. 
Level 13, Sprint. Burning Rage is one that we'll discuss in the other build. Spell Shield is kind of cool, but it doesn't add as much survivability and utility as Sprint does. Shrink Ray is generally a good talent, but again, not nearly as good as Sprint. You will disable an enemy slightly for four seconds, but Sprint could allow you to survive and last many, many, many more seconds in a fight to keep healing and stunning. Level 16, this is a really interesting talent choice. All four are good here. All four are good. Hardened Focus, Gathering Radiance, Holy Shock, Imposing Presence. I'm going here with Hardened Focus. It's, in my opinion, is by far the best. While you're above 80%, your basic ability cooldowns regenerate 50% faster. So there's an element uh, of playstyle here, which means that you should heal yourself before healing others. Kind of like the message, if you've ever flown in an airplane, you must help yourself with the oxygen mask before you help others. Because you'll be able to do a better job helping them. Partly here that's the case. You don't have to rely on that talent when you're level 16. If you are hurt, but someone else is hurt and needs it more, by all means, heal them already. But uh, it's insane how much with the increased mana regen that you have from level 1, how much you can just keep casting your spells uh, in fights. It's really good. I love this talent. One more thing, which not everyone knows. When Uther dies and he becomes a spirit form for a while, he doesn't have HP and he doesn't have mana cost. You can always cast all your spells. It's not tied to how much mana you had when you died. Also, you may be dead, but is your health at 0% or 100%? Well, the game interprets it as being at 100%, which means you have that cooldown reduction bonus from your heart and focus all the time while you're dead. Really cool, which means instead of one wave of radiance, you can cast two while you're dead. You can do three holy lights and three hammers of justice. At level 20, you have two good talent choices, Divine Hurricane and Storm Shield. I like Divine Hurricane. Cooldown reduced by 20 seconds. It's almost like a basic ability. You can do it like, what is it? Every 45, every 50 seconds, something like this. Really good. I think it's like, yeah, I think it's like every 50 seconds. Uh, it's basically every team fight, sometimes even twice. Storm Shield is really good, but your ultimate at this level at level 20 plus will be pathetic by comparison and short uh, pretty long cooldown so go with divine hurricane here and now if you'd like to take a screenshot there we go best friend uther conjures pursuit protective shield clairvoyance or cleanse divine storm sprint hardened focus and divine hurricane All right, that was the best friend Uther. Now I'd like to show the other one. Unholy Uther. We've already kind of gone through the talents, so I'll just show the build right away. Unholy Uther. The changes here we're doing is Holy Devotion, Burning Rage, and Holy Shock. Take this build if you are, for example, the second healer behind a Brightwing or the second healer behind a Lily. Let's take a look. Uh, talents level seven, Holy Devotion. You're now 100% effective while in spirit form. Keep in mind that that doesn't mean that you should die as quickly as possible to get to that stage. Unless in between level one and four, the death, spawner, uh, the death spawn is so short, like the respawn time, that it's okay to die if that means you're killing one person. One for one is great because you're gonna stay alive. For example, in Haunted Minds, this is a great talent, a great trait to upgrade. You're gonna come back so fast and if you kill someone or you heal your allies really effectively and allow them to kill someone else that's a great trait because you're alive after death for a while at level 16 if you have a choice to sprint away keep yourself alive for a little bit more maybe even heal and enter the fight or be the only survivor of a fight it's probably more worth it than to die and uh, just because uh, you have holy devotion I've, I've sprinted out of combat before rather than dying regen a bit of mana, I got my cooldowns back, heal someone else, still stay at the edge of the fight, and then finally walk in again, stun someone to do a, a close conclusion of a fight into our favor instead of into our disfavor, which uh, wouldn't have happened if I had just died there. 
because the time I was alive was, for instance, 15, 20 seconds. Burning Rage. It's really painful to give up Sprint, but since we're going Unholy Uther anyway, this damage persists while you are dead. This is actually a build that was first uh, given to me by someone else, and in the meantime I played with it a lot, and it's really fun to play, and it's powerful. And on a map like Sky Temple and Haunted Mines, where team fights are forced really hard around really important objectives, and not something like Cursed Hollow, where the curse, it only happens once every three tributes, and it's not game ending, it's not the same. Even though fights happen regularly, but it's not the same. Sky Temple and Haunted Mines, oh, that's hard engages. And Burning Rage on this, on like a small area that you're fighting, like Sky Temple, persisting at 100% effectiveness post mortem, that's pretty great. And people don't expect it. They don't expect you to take that holy devotion and have all your spells and heals be full effectiveness. Finally, we round it off with Holy Shock. Holy Light can easily do like 900 damage in the advanced mid game. Uh, 900 healing so 450 damage that's a lot for a melee support and people again they don't expect it they're they're used to you doing one holy radiance for 380 damage which is now only 190 because you're dead and that's kind of it suddenly you're doing 380 damage with your wave of radiance and you're doing another 500 damage with your holy shock while doing burning rage and a stun for full damage basic attacks for full damage <laughs> So you can kill people and completely surprise them. Watch yourself own some 60% Bala after death. It's pretty fun and effective. So one more time to build. There we are. So this was the Uther one-stop guide with talents and strategy picks. I hope you enjoyed yourself and will be able to use these tips effectively. I just want to mention finally to uh, to say that you need to keep using your judgment what is going to have the best positive effect as Uther. You should treat level advantage as your team uh, different as being at a level disadvantage. You can't always get the same effect out of your talents. Analyze where is the most value healing who and you will end up doing a big uh, positive effect for your team. One more tip, I sh um, don't cast Hammer of Justice on buildings, like enemy buildings or on creeps. It doesn't add a lot more and you may miss a crucial kill when someone pokes out of the gate with their head, when one of the enemy guns. It doesn't add enough damage, you're wasting mana, you're wasting cooldown, just don't do it. Another tip is um, on Garden Terror, you have the, the neutral big plant terrors. You can interrupt their slam stun by casting a hammer of justice which prevents your whole team from having to move back disengage so you can end up killing it faster and reducing the chance that the enemy comes in cleans you all up creep checks you and uh, steals the seeds yeah that was uh oh yeah one more thing when you have the regeneration globe effect the conjurer's pursuit there's this cool thing which you can do is let's say you're playing a game and you see that all lanes are pretty stable there's no intense ganking going on like nova zeratul roaming around together or arthas kerrigan it's all kind of stable and and in flux what one cool thing you can do is as uther join yourself with the two-man lane so for example your positioning is three heroes here one here one here kill the wizard and you'll do it fast because you're three people there you kill the wizard you get the globe you rotate to the middle lane you, maybe you ask them to wait to take the globe, but generally speaking, they won't have killed it yet as fast as at the top lane. You take that globe, and then you go back to the top for the second wave, and you take that globe. Rotating like this can bring your mana regen up twice as quickly as it normally would in the early game. And for the very first objective already, you'll have uh, one or two stacks of globes, which is uh, really great and well, something I came up with myself. It's kind of funny seeing an uther roam like that without the clear purpose of for instance you know killing uh enemy hero uh just farming gloves and it's pretty effective uh final tip don't try to solo camp yourself as uther you'll miss about three objectives in the process while you're trying to do so so always ask help
So that was it for now, the one-stop Uther guide. Hope you enjoyed it. You can uh, watch me pretty much every day on twitch.tv slash followgrubby with some live play. Maybe I'll be showing some Uther play there as well. But I'll also try to make a video soon where I use one of these builds in a public quick match game, solo queue, and try to explain the finer things about where to position, who to heal, and how to move around the map and how to play. Hope you enjoyed it. This was me, Grubby, for you with the One Stop Uther Guide. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube for more gameplay videos and hero guides in the future of Heroes of the Storm. All right. Thanks guys for watching and have a great day. Bye.